ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد Allah the mighty and majestic has stated in his book the final two verses of surah al-baqara wherein Allah jalla wa ala has said amana rusul bima unzila ilayhi min rabbihi wal mu'minun kullun amana billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi la nufarriqu bayna ahadin min rusulihi wa qalu sami'na wa ata'na غفرانك ربنا واليك المسير الله has said in these words that the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he has believed in what was revealed to him from his lord and so have the believers all of them have believed in Allah and in his angels and in his books and in his messengers all of them saying we make no distinction between any of his messengers and they say we hear sami'na and we obey we seek your forgiveness our lord and to you is the final destination then allah has mentioned la yukallifu allah nafsan illa wus'aha لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تؤاخذنا ان نسينا او اخطانا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا اسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقه لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا انت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ذا الله دوز نوت بيردن ا سول more than that which is within its capacity and each soul will have the consequence of the good that it has earned and it will bear the consequence of the evil of that which which it has earned so our lord do not take us to account if we have forgotten or if we have erred our lord Do not lay upon us a burden a burden like that which you have laid upon those who came before us our lord do not burden us with that which we have no ability to bear and pardon us and forgive us and have mercy upon us you o oh allah our are our protector so aid us over the disbelieving people Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim narrate in the Sahihs in the Sahihain meaning of Bukhari and Muslim from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu that Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said man qara'a bil ayatayn min akhir surah al-Baqara fi laylatin kafatahu kafatahu that he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that whosoever recites the two verses at the end of surah al-baqara in the night then they will suffice him and the suffice here 
my brothers and sisters, refers to the fact that the recital of these two ayahs, these ayatain, at the end of Surah Al-Baqarah, that they will protect a person from evil and from that which he hates, the despised affairs, and from the shaitan, and that the shaitan will not approach him in the night, and he will be rewarded for reciting them. And all of these are gathered from this one narration as Ibn Hajar mentions. Imam Ahmad reported in his Musnad from Abu Dhar that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that I was given u'titu khawatim surat al-Baqarah min kanzi min kanzin tahta al-arsh that I was given the last two verses from surat al-Baqarah from the treasure that is just beneath the throne of Allah that was not given to any prophet before me. Imam Muslim reports in his Sahih from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu that he said that when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was taken on the, night, on the night journey, meaning upon the Isra and the Mi'raj, that he was taken as far as the Sidratul Muntaha Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He was taken as far as the low tree at the, at the furthest boundary. Which, is a, which as he said, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, that it is in the sixth heaven. It is there. He mentioned that everything that ascends from the earth, this is where it stops. And then it is taken from there. And it is there. That everything that descends from above stops. And then it is taken from there. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, yaghsha sidrata ma yaghsha. And that which covered the low tree did indeed cover it. From Surah Al-Najm. Ibn Mas'ud said, Moths of gold. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given three things thereafter. He was given the five daily prayers. He was given the final verses of Surah Al-Baqarah that we have recited. And he was given forgiveness for the major sins of his ummah. For those amongst them who do not associate with Allah any partners in worship. Meaning for the Muwahideen. Imam al Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala, in explanation of this hadith, he mentioned what is intended by forgiveness of the major sins. That the Messenger of Allah was given three things the five daily prayers, the final two ayahs of Surah Al Baqarah, and the forgiveness of the major sins. The forgiveness of the major sins, what is intended is forgiveness. Naam. What is intended by forgiveness is that the major sinner will not remain in the hellfire forever. And not that he may not be punished at all, but he may receive the punishment deserving upon the sinners. Or he mentions Imam an nawi or the intent could be of forgiveness, that some of the ummah are forgiven for their major sins. And that is particular to this ummah. And Imam Muslim narrates in his sahih from Abdullah ibn Abbas, Radiallahu anhuma who said, while Jibreel was sitting with the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he heard a creaking sound from above him. So he raised his head to the sky and he said, This is a door in heaven that has been opened today, and it has never been opened before this day. And an angel has descended from it. And this angel has come down to earth. And that angel has never descended before this day. So the angel came and he gave his salam. He said, Assalamu alaikum. To the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he said, Receive glad tidings of two lights that have been given to you. That have been never given to any prophet before you. The first of them is the opening chapter of the Qur'an, Surah Al-Fatiha. And secondly, 
the closing verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. You will not recite a single letter from them except that you will be given reward due to them. And as for the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the beginning of that which we recite from these two ayahs, آمَنَ الرَّسُولُ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ The messenger has believed in that which was revealed to him from his Lord. And so have the believers. So have the mu'minun. Ibn Kathir rahimahullah ta'ala mentions that the saying of Allah the Most High when he said, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ And the believers. Then this is connected to that which was said at the beginning. Amana Rasul, That the messenger has believed. Meaning, that who has believed here in that which, which was revealed to the Messenger of Allah from his Lord? The Messenger believed himself and the believers, they also believed. Then Allah the Most High said concerning all of them, meaning the Messenger of Allah and the Mu'minun, كُلٌّ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُولِهِ لَا نُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ أَهَدٍ مِّنْ رُسُولِهِ That all of them have believed in Allah, meaning the believers, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All of them believed in Allah and his angels and his books and his messengers. And they all say, we make no distinction between his messengers. From the first of them to the last of them. We believe in every single one of them. So the believers have true faith, my brothers and sisters. They have iman in Allah. That Allah is al-wahid, al-ahad. That he is the sole one. The singularly unique. He is alone. He is eternal. The self-sufficient. Requiring nothing from his creation. There is no ilah. There is no deity other than him worthy of worship. And there is no lord and creator besides him. They believe the believers. In all of the prophets and all of the messengers. And in all of the revealed books that were, that were sent down from the heavens. To the servant messengers and to the prophets. The believers, they do not distinguish between any single one of them. Meaning the prophets and the messengers. By believing in some and believing in others. Because to disbelieve in one messenger is to disbelieve in all of the messengers. Rather, all of them were truthful in, their eye, in the eyes of the believers. All of them are truthful. All of them are pious. All of them are rightly guided. All of them are those who guided others to the path of goodness. And that is even if some prophets would come and they would abrogate the law of other prophets by Allah's permission. So a prophet may come with a sharia or a messenger may come with a legislation, with a sharia that abrogates that which came before. Even if that was the case, we still believe in all of them. Until the law of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam abrogated all of, the, all of the laws that came before him. And he was the seal of the prophets and the seal of the messengers. It is his law, his sharia, upon which the hour will be established. Upon the sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hour will come. And they will never cease to be a group, Ibn Kathir mentions. And they will never cease to be a group from the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa manifestly upon the truth. They will always remain that ta'ifa that will never cease to remain. Zahirina al haqq And they are the believers. They are the ones who believed as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam believed. They believe in Allah and his books and his angels and so on. They believe in that which, which was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then Allah mentioned their trait. That they say, وَقَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا This is their trait. That they say, the believers they say, we hear and we obey. Meaning, we heard your speech, O oh Allah. And we understood it. And we stood firm with it. And we acted in accordance to it. So, غُفْرَانَكَ رَبَّنَا So we seek your forgiveness, our Lord. 
a request for the mercy of Allah, seeking his forgiveness and seeking his kindness. وَإِلَيْكَ الْمَصِيرِ And to you is the final destination, the return. The end destination is to him on the day of reckoning. وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد ذن الله سبحانه وتعالى they after begins the beginning of the next ayah. La yukallifu Allahu nafsan illa wus'aha. That Allah does not burden a soul except with that which, within, which is within its capacity. Allah doesn't burden a soul with more than it can bear. Imam Muslim rahimahullah ta'ala mentions and reports in his sahih. From Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, who said that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the following words, لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَإِن تُبْدُوا مَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوْ تُخْفُوهُ يُحَاسِبْكُمْ بِهِ اللَّهِ فَيَغْفِرُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيُعَذِّبُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated that to Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in earth. Whether you show or you reveal that which is within your souls or whether you, con- or whether you conceal it, Allah will bring it to you and Allah will bring you to account for it. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive whomsoever he wills. And Allah will punish whom he wills. And Allah is over everything, all capable. When the companions, radiallahu anhum, they heard these words of Allah, they became distressed. They became distressed by this, by, by hearing those words. So they came to the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and they knelt down before him upon their knees. They came to him and they said, Ya Rasulullah, we have been enjoined to do good. That which we are able to do, such as salah, the fasting, sorry, the prayer and the fasting and the jihad and the sadaqah, the giving of charity. But now this verse has been revealed to you. We cannot bear the weight of its burden. So the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to them, do you mean to say to me that which the people of the book said, the people of the two revealed books said before you that they used to say سَمِعْنَا وَعَسَيْنَا that we hear and we disobey? Rather, the Prophet ﷺ said to them, rather you should say سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا غُفْرَانَكَ رَبَّنَا وَإِلَيْكَ الْمَصِيرِ Rather you should say, we hear and we obey. And we seek your forgiveness, our Lord. And to you is the final destination. Then he mentioned, radiallahu anhu Abu Huraira, that Abu Huraira then said, when the people started to say that over and over again, so much so, that it began to flow easily upon their tongues. That they began to say, They continually used to say this. Up until it started to flow easily upon their tongues. Why? Because look how they came to the Messenger of Allah. Because they heard the words of, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah said to them, Whether you show that which is within yourselves or whether you conceal it. Allah will bring you to account for it. So they felt that this was a burden too far. So Allah's Messenger advised them. Are you trying to say what the people of the book used to say to their prophets? We hear and we disobey. 
Rather you should say we hear and we obey. So then they started saying it. We hear and we obey. We hear and we obey. That they kept saying this. Sami'na wa ata'na. Sami'na wa ata'na. And they used to seek Allah's forgiveness. Ask for his forgiveness. Ghufranaka rabbana wa ilayka al-maseer. Oh Allah, we ask. Oh Allah, oh our Lord, we ask your forgiveness. And the return, the final destination is to you. So they said this. Then Allah the Mighty and Majestic revealed the words. Amana rasulu bima unzila ilayhi min rabbihi wal mu'minun. Till the end of the ayah. Up until Allah at the end, when Allah said, Ghufranaka rabbana wa ilayka al masir that we seek your forgiveness, our Lord, and to you is the final destination. Up until Allah revealed that. So they were already saying, Sami'na wa ata'na, ghufranaka rabbana wa ilayka al-masir. They were already saying those words, we hear and we obey, because it became a habit for them. These words became a habit for them, we hear and we obey the revelation. And we ask you Allah to forgive us. Forgive us for what? Forgive us our shortcomings. Forgive us our sins. Then Allah revealed those words describing the believers. That the believers, the messenger has believed in that which was revealed to him. From his Lord and so have the believers. So Allah coupled them together. That the believers have believed just as the messenger has believed. And they are the ones who say, because there was a habit upon their tongue to say, سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا it became a habit for them to say, we hear and we obey. And it was a habit for them to seek forgiveness from their Lord. When they did that, and that was revealed, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Abu Huraira said, then Allah the Most High abrogated it. And so he revealed, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تؤاخذنا Allah does not burden a soul with more than it can bear. And each soul will have the consequence of the good that it has done. And he will bear the consequence of the evil that it has earned. Our Lord, do not take us to account if we have forgotten or if we have erred. So then Allah said, Naam. The hadith mentions in Sahih Muslim, Upon this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Naam. In a narration, Allah said, Qad fa'alt. That indeed I have done so. Meaning, Oh our Lord, do not impose upon us blame. Do not call us to account. If we forget, or if we err. So then Allah said, Naam. I have forgiven you. I have granted you that. And I have done so. Rabbana wa la tahmil alayna. إِسْرًا كَمَا حَمَلْتَهُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِنَا Our Lord, do not place upon us a burden like that which you placed upon those who came before us. And then Allah said, نَعَمْ Allah said, yes, I will not do so. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَعْفُ عَنَّا وَاغْفِرْ لَنَا وَارْحَمْنَا And pardon us. And pardon us, and forgive us, and have mercy upon us. Anta Maulana, you are our protector. Fansurna ala al qawm al kafirin. So aid us and give us victory over the disbelieving people. So Allah said, Naam, meaning you will have that. So long as you do all of those things that came before, that you believe as the Messenger believed. Then Allah subhanahu, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and that's the end of the hadith, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وُسْعَهَا It's the beginning of the second ayah. Allah does not burden a soul with more than it can bear. Meaning, that no one is charged or burdened beyond his capacity and beyond his strength. Allah will not do so. From this, we ascertain the kindness of Allah, the goodness of Allah, the mercy of Allah upon His creation. And each soul 
will have the consequence of the good that it has earned. وَعَلَيْهَا مَكْتَسَبَتْ And it will bear the consequence of the evil that it has earned. And this is concerning the deeds that fall under what each individual is charged with and burdened with. Meaning that they are things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has charged you with, has commanded you with, and has burdened you with. And you are capable of doing them. So your soul and you yourself will be asked Yawm Al-Qiyamah concerning them. And you will not be able to say, Oh Allah, you burdened me with more than what I was capable of doing. Why? Because Allah already, when the believers, they asked Allah, do not burden us with that which we cannot bear. Oh Allah, do not give us or do not burden us and do not place upon our shoulders that which we have no power to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Naam, that I will not do this. And Allah will not burden you except with that which you can do. Then you will face your Lord. And you will not have an excuse to say, I was not able and I was not capable. You were able and you were capable and you refused. Because Allah will not burden a soul with more than it can bear. So every soul will will have the consequences of the good that it has done with reward. And every soul that has done evil and wickedness will bear the consequences of the evil that it has done. Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim narrate in their sahihs from Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that indeed Allah has overlooked for my ummah that which an individual utters to himself in his soul so long as he does not act upon it and he does not speak with it. So a person, yes, there are things as Imam al-Nawawi and others have mentioned that the soul speaks to itself and it whispers to itself with evil. You despise it and you hate it. Because you know that it is disobedience to Allah and that Allah hates it. So you recognize that fact. So long as you don't utter it upon the tongue and so long as you don't act upon it upon, with your limbs, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has overlooked the ummah for that. So it is not the case as Imam al nawawi and others have mentioned from the ulama. It is not the case that the mere soul whispers. It will whisper. As one of the companions said to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, that our souls, they whisper or they speak to us. That we have speech, meaning that they don't utter it upon their tongue, but it revolves in the soul and the heart. That were we to utter it, it would be the cause of our destruction. So this shows that a person, he recognizes the evil of that which is whispered in his soul. By the call to sin and transgression and shirk and kufr. The person he realizes these, these are the whisperings of shaitan or the whisperings of the soul. So, so long as a person does not utter them upon his tongue and he does not act upon them, whether it be sin or transgression or other than that, then the ummah is overlooked. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Rabbana la tu'akhidna inna sina wa akhta'na. Our Lord, do not impose upon us blame if we have forgotten or we have erred. Meaning, if we leave off an obligation due to forgetfulness, do not call us to account. Because the pen is lifted, as the Prophet ﷺ said, for the one who forgets. Or if we commit a sin forgetfully, do not call, call us to account. Oh Allah, because we forgot. And what did Allah say? Qad fa'alt. I have already forgiven you. I've already done it because it was forgetfulness. Oh, if we have heard, oh, akhta'ana, from the truth that we err, that we err from the truth out of ignorance of the sharia, that a person may do something because he doesn't have knowledge. So Allah, do not call us to account. Ibn Majah narrates from, the, from Ibn, uh, Ibn Majah, reports from Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, 
that indeed Allah has forgiven my nation for me. Allah has forgiven my nation for me for their mistakes. And that which they fall into forgetfully. And that which they are forced to do. So Allah has forgiven. And this is the mercy of Allah. A burden that has lifted from this ummah. Because they are individuals who have the trait that they say, wa It was easy. They said it so often that it was so easy for them to say, Forgive us our Lord. And to you is the final destination. And our Lord, Rabbana, وَلَا تَحْمِلْ عَلَيْنَا إِسْرًا كَمَا حَمَلْتَهُ وَلَا الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِنَا Meaning do not burden us with difficult deeds that are hard upon us even if we can do them. Even if we are able to do them, oh Allah, don't burden us with them. Since you have sent us the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the Prophet of Rahmah, the Prophet of Mercy, the Prophet whom you sent with the upright religion, the steadfast, steadfast religion of Tawheed, the religion of ease, the religion of lenience and forbearance. And likewise, the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbana, wala tuhammilna ma la taqata lana bih. Our Lord, do not burden us with that which we have no ability to bear. And in the hadith that we mentioned earlier, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Naam, I will not burden you with that which you have no power and strength to bear. Wa'fu anna wa'gfir lana warhamna. Pardon us, forgive us, and have mercy upon us. For that which is between us and between you, our Lord, that we have fallen short in, which you are fully aware of and nothing is hidden from you. Forgive us and have mercy upon us for our deficiencies and our slips. And forgive us for that which occurs between us from the rights of our brothers and from your servants. And do not make manifest and do not bring into the open, O Allah, our hidden and our ugly sins. And then Allah finishes the ayah by saying, Anta Mawlana, you are our protector. Fansurna ala al kafirin. So aid us and support us over the disbelieving people. So you are our helper, our protector, the one who aids us. Upon you do we fully rely. And to you do we complain. And there is no movement or power for us except by you, O oh Allah. Fansurna ala al kafirin. So aid us over the disbelieving people, over those who reject your religion. Those who deny your worship. Those who reject the messengership of your prophet. And instead they worship other than you. And they associate partners with you in worship. So aid us against them, O oh Allah. These ayat that we are to recite, my brothers and sisters. As the Sahaba used to recite them. Before resting in the night and going to sleep. They are a protection because of what they contain. They are from the treasures underneath the throne of Allah. They are from the three affairs that the Prophet ﷺ was given that no other Prophet before him was given. So don't abandon them and understand them. And, and likewise, my brothers and sisters, upon us is to act in accordance to them. And may Allah give us that ability. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.